Hi, everybody, and welcome. So you've wanted to start quilting, the quilting process, the finished quilting with your embroidery machine, but you're maybe a little nervous about doing a whole quilt all at once. And you've heard about a process or a technique called quilt as you go. Well, then you're in the right video because that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video is the quilt as you go technique. Now, this is what I call version one or one technique because there are a few different techniques. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Diana. I'm the owner, the educator, and the designer here at So Uncommon. I'm thrilled to have you all with me for our Quilt As You Go version one, which is March's block of the month, week three. Week three of every month of our block of the month is about quilting. Some weeks I introduce, months I introduce a new quilting design that I've created. And some months we talk about something specific to the finish quilting process. And that's what we're doing this month. We're talking about one version of quilt as you go. And we're going to talk a little bit about batting. This isn't a batting tutorial. That will be in another video at another time. Um, when you come to the end of this video, there will be a couple of videos that pop up that you can click on if you want more just quilting information. It won't be quilt as you go, but more quilting information. Um, so there'll be a couple of more good ones for you to kind of help get your taste buds going for this quilting process with our embroidery machine. So why don't we get started by, I'm going to share my screen with you and we're going to go under my camera and you can see here I have a few pieces of batting. And let's start out talking about this batting. Now, this is 100% polyester. Now, a high loft polyester is typically not recommended for quilting. It's a little too lofty. If you want to sew it by hand, sew it on your sewing machine where you can control it a little bit better, you could certainly use it. But um, I prefer, and most quilters prefer, not to use something that is a high loft of any kind of batting, but especially a high loft polyester. But this is polyester, and this is a little bit unique because it's actually called something else as well. It's called a fusible fleece. Um, this side, if you could feel it, is bumpy. There is um, a fusible product on here. So when I would lay my quilt block down on here, let me just bring in a couple of quilt blocks that I have pieced over here. We'll pretend like they have been pieced into an actual quilt um, as a single block, but here's a piece. So all of these would fuse on here if this were my quilt block and then I could quilt it. Okay, and that's nice because then that takes care of the basting process. And whenever you're quilting, you need to baste. Sometimes for smaller projects, I'll use a quilting spray adhesive, which is a temporary, like a 505 spray. Um, I'll list that in the description below. Or I might use a fusible fleece. I don't like to use fusible fleece personally for my large bed quilts, but I do like to use them for wall quilts, smaller projects, um, things like that. Things that I'm not going to be snuggling under or that children aren't going to be snuggling under. Then I find a fusible fleece perfectly acceptable. Um, so, and we're going to talk about that more because the demonstration I'm going to do at the machine today, I'm actually going to do on a fusible fleece for you. And I'll list these in the description as well, these different products. Um, then here is one. It is super common. This is a scrap, as you can tell, because it's not quite um, squared up. But this is a super popular batting. You can see it's a low loft. And I know you're thinking, boy, that's not going to give me much warmth. Believe it or not, low loft battings are going to give you plenty of warmth. This is what we call an 80-20. It's 80% 80 cotton, 20% polyester. And it, it is beautiful in your quilts. It behaves itself while you're doing the quilting process. It behaves itself nicely in the laundry. Um, and it just makes a beautiful quilt. And I use it quite a bit. I use this a lot when I'm making throw quilts. Things that are just getting tossed around the living room on movie night or when somebody's not feeling well and they want a couple of extra quilts. 
I give them something with the 80-20 in it because I know I can throw it in the laundry and I'm not going to have any kinds of problems with it. So that's an 80-20. Now, it looks very much like this batting here, but it's not. It's This batting is different. This batting is 100% cotton. And it is by far my favorite batting when I'm doing quilts. And believe me, a cotton batting is actually going to give you more warmth than other battings that you might think would be warm battings like wool and things. Wool can actually keep you nice and cool. It keeps you very warm as well, but it can keep you nice and cool as well. But a cotton is going to give you a great amount of warmth. It's beautiful. Um, in baby quilts. This is the only product I will use in baby quilts. I use 100% cotton. And it's, you can tell it has a light hand. And the 8020 has a light hand as well. Um, so really easy and beautiful to use. When I launder quilts with 100% cotton, what I will do is I will wash it on a in cool water and then I will dry it on a cool to a medium for about 30 minutes or so. And then I lay my quilt out or I hang it on the clothesline in the summer. You could fully dry your cotton. All of your instructions will be on the packaging typically, but that's how I launder my cotton. And like I said, today is not about um, a batting uh, tutorial because there are so many other battings. There's wool, there's silk, there's bamboo. Bamboo is the most luscious batting you'll ever use in your life. I just absolutely love it. And I use it a lot when I'm giving quilts as gifts. But um, we'll talk about that in another tutorial on another day. And so I'll just share with you, today um, was actually National Quilters Day. So happy National Quilters Day, everybody. I actually got over to one of my uh, local stores. And when I say local stores, all of the stores around me are an hour and a half to two hours away from me. Um, so I got over to one and I picked up some fabric. I'm making a baby quilt for a friend. And I picked up the Quilter's Dream Cotton. It's 100% pure cotton. And if it has the Cotton Industry logo on it, you pretty much know that you're getting a good, um, a good product. It even tells you there's no scrims or glues or anything like that in there. Um, now this says hand and machine needles glide smoothly. That's correct. Finished quilt might be gently machine washed and dried on a low heat, so you know how you can launder it there. Um, Pre-washing, not recommended. This comes really clean with a minimal amount of shrinkage um, when you quilt. And all quilts, you know how quilts get this. Let's bring this quilt in. See how the quilt gets that little bit of a fluffy, puffy look? That's because of that minimal amount of, of shrinkage. And that's what makes a quilt. That's, that's the sign of a quilt is that look. So um, the Quilter's Dream Cotton is just one that I really like. It's not overly expensive. I purchased a crib size, and this is what I like about this. There's craft, crib, throw, twin, double, plus queen, super queen, and king size. Uh, battings in this there. You can read that a little bit better. And this crib size is only $12, was only $12.50. Plus it was on sale because it was National Quilters Day. Um, so I just really love it. And there's more information in the package. This particular batting is this one that I showed you, this 100% cotton. It's just really lovely. Now, are there other lovely brands of batting? Oh, absolutely there are. So um, check with your local retailer and they may have one that they recommend. Um, or you could look for Quilter's Dream Cotton online as well, if you like, if you're interested in that. So those are some of the battings that I use most often, to be quite honest. Those to the 80 the 80 20 and the cotton are my go-to's pretty much all the time if i'm doing something very special um i'll do a bamboo or maybe a wool but 
like I said, that's for another time. But now I want to talk to you about the actual quilting process. Let's bring in this. These are all little wall quilts that I've done because you're never going to see a whole quilt underneath this camera, right? Just impossible. So, um, and please excuse me. I know I'm not as quite put together as I normally am. I've got really super bad allergies. They have hit us all in our area really, really badly. And so I can't put anything in my eyes. My eyes are just itching 24 hours a day. I'm, I'm pretty miserable right now. But so if I don't look my normal self, I, I apologize. That's why that's what's going on. So here in this tabletop, it's a star a large star block. I took what was a six inch block. And when I created it, I created that this is a 24 inch. So nice little wall hanging. And you can see I did some quilting on it. Now what I did here was an edge to edge design. And I believe these stars were from Amelie Scott designs. If you've heard of Amelie Scott designs, I bet you have from the edge to edge quilting. And normally we think of edge to edge quilting in columns and rows and doing it from the very edge to the very edge. Well, my thought and the thought that I was taught from my grandmother is quilting does not have to cover every inch of your quilt. Quilting is there to hold the sandwich together, the top, the batting, and the backing. That's what it's there for. You don't have to cover every inch. Some people like to. That will, If you cover every inch of your quilt, your quilt's going to be slightly um, more rigid because it's going to have a lot of stitches in it. Um, if you do it a little looser or a larger pattern, it's going to have a little bit more of a hand and a throw to it, which is what I love, especially when I'm going to cuddle up under something that's in my living room or on my bed. So on this one, I chose a star design, but instead of doing the columns like you might normally think, what I did is I did four of them, bringing them in at the corners and then one here and one here. Um, and that's all I did. So you can tell there's some of these places where there's little to no quilting in it. And that's fine. There's plenty of quilting here to hold this whole piece together. And this piece was quilted with the sandwich, the backing, batting, the whole, the whole yard, 10 yards. And you can see the pattern on the back. That's how we traditionally think of our quilting. But the process with quilt as you go, there is a process, a tech quilt as you go technique, which your back will look like that where you quilt the sandwich, but that's not the technique I'm going to show you today. The technique I'm going to show you today is one where you do your front quilting. You do it with your batting, just your batting and your top. And then when you add your backing fabric, you do a little bit, a very light amount of stitch in the ditch, which is on your sewing machine, which is a very easy to do with this type of process. So I will show you this. This has another layer to it. This is a cross stitched. This cross stitch was done on my embroidery machine and we'll be doing some of this later in 2023 here at Sew Common. But this was a pattern I purchased and it gave me headaches because it was really badly digitized. Colors didn't match up with what they were supposed to be. Um, they would tell you you were at this leg when you were at that candy cane. It was really difficult. So I'm not going to mention who this came from or anything because it's I spent about three days kind of re-digitizing this so I could get it done because this block alone, the digitizing was so bad. It took me like eight hours to get the block done, which it shouldn't have. It turned out beautifully. I love the pattern, but somehow something slipped through there and processing and that happens to us all. So, you know, I'm not complaining, but I didn't want to quilt over this, this stitching it was beautiful as it was. So I put it together as a wall hanging. This hangs in our uh, dining room every Christmas. And then I did a little bit of stitch in the ditch in the back. So you can see there's a stitch in the ditch around each main block around my edging. And that's all I have on the back. And it's fine. It's plenty. I know it's a little hard to see because that color is light. 
So that was done. That is kind of a quilt as you go. But here I want to show you last month's project. The February block of the month was the crossover star and we made a um, table topper. And the design I created last month had a, a block design, as you see here, and a block design here that could be used more as an edge to edge quilt design. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to put my single flower in my five parts of my star and out here on my corners, that's where I wanted to do the diagonal um, edge to edge design. And then, so what I did was I quilted this with the batting only. And then I added my backing and took it to my sewing machine. And all I did was stitch in the ditch around the four edges of my star. And then I came in and did a diagonal kind of to make it look a little mitered right here. And the miter was great because it lined up right with the miter of my binding. And so we can see on the back that all that's done on the back of this is this block, the binding, and my diagonals on the corner for a wall quilt, a table topper, or even a larger quilt like a throw. This is a perfectly acceptable quilting technique and it gets you started. It helps you to feel comfortable doing your quilting. So let's come out of this camera and back in. So it's a perfectly acceptable technique and that is what I want to show you today. We're going to talk about that technique and there will be other videos coming because there is, like I said, another quilt as you go technique where you quilt your top, your batting and your backing all at once. It is a much more involved process. Um, and that will be a full extra video at some point because it, it's a much longer process than this is. So let me, I'm sorry that my voice is kind of coming and going. I really apologize, but I didn't want to miss out our week together. I love our time together. So let's add in our machine camera. And now we're here at my embroidery machine. And I've already hooped my top and my batting. Now I'm using a magnetic hoop. If your machine comes with a magnetic hoop, that's great. You can buy uh, generalized magnetic hoops that fit your specific machines out in the marketplace, or you can use a traditional hoop. That's fine as well. Um, I find the magnetics a little bit more convenient. We'll talk about hoops again another time as well. So what I've done here, if you can see right here, I've used that fusible um, stabilizer that I showed, or that fusible batting that I showed you, the fusible fleece. It's only fusible on one side. So this side has no fusible. This side is fusible. So what I did now, I am using a block here from a, um, um, from a panel. I'm sorry, my brain's a little gone. Um, there are like eight different blocks with different quilted designs on them in the panel. And so I'm going to quilt each one of them in this technique I'm showing you. Then I will sew them all together and I'll have a nice big wall hanging or I might even turn it into more of a throw quilt. Uh, we'll see. Um, but I'm set up here. I've got my, um, my needle right in the center so I know I'm in the center and I've you can see I fused this onto the fleece and it's fused on there it's not going anywhere um, and I'm gonna when I, we're done with the stitch out I'm going to take you to the other camera and show you how I would finish this so all I'm using today can you see right here all I'm using is a stipple stitch that I designed for myself um, when I was digitizing one day, I like the look of my own stipple stitch because 
it's my stipple stitch. Um, there's nothing wrong with stipple stitches that are made by computer and everything is perfect and looks wonderful. Those are great, especially if that's how you want your quilt to look. But I like when I draw my stipple stitch, I like how it looks, but I can't do it free motion on my sewing machine to save my life. I've tried for years, never turns out the way I like, but I was able to draw it and then put it in software. I didn't create it in the machine. I know some of these higher end machines now will create your stipples for you. I did not do that. I designed or I designed this and digitized it myself in a software. Um, so this is, but this is my hand in this. So I kind of like it for my quilts, right? So I've got this up here and I'm all set to go. And I'm quilting with my favorite quilt color, which um, I'm using an Isocord 50, 5220 thread. It's that really beautiful light aqua. I'll show you when we're done. But this is going to come up here and it's going to quilt out. And I've made my design so that it will quilt right in the star itself, okay? I'm not gonna quilt it out to the very edge of the block. And I have my stitch width set at three. And the reason I like that stitch width set at three, it makes it look a little more hand stitched than tight machine stitches. I really love how it looks. And this is turning out great. And this whole, so I'm stitching at 700 stitches per minute. This is stitching out, this particular hooping is stitching out in one minute. So gosh, if I had everything um, fused and ready to go, I could just whip these eight blocks out probably in about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the time it took me to switch things around. I could get this, these blocks quilted very quickly. And to be honest, this is my favorite way to quilt as you go because I like the, I, I don't like the, I, with the other technique I'll show you another day, I don't like all the extra, you have to add sashing, you have to do all this stuff. I, I don't care for it as much. Some people do because it gives you a fully quilted back and that's fine. All right, so we're done stitching here. Design, I'm gonna take this out of my machine and now let's go back over to our other camera. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Here we go. There we go, here we are at my other camera. Alrighty, so here we are. We've stitched all this out. I've stitched it out with an aqua. And remember, I've told you in the past that this really beautiful light aqua thread will look perfect with everything. Look at that. Aqua on the peaches and the oranges and the yellows, it, it just blends in. Isn't that beautiful? That's the color I just quilted with. And isn't that beautiful how it turned out on there? It it really is very, very neutral. Um, it's amazing how that color blends. They say this is the prettiest color for women to wear too, of all skin tones and hair colors. Um, they said that that is the color that makes women look their best. So it makes my quilts look their best. So maybe that's true. Maybe I should start wearing that color more often. So I'm just going to take this out of my hoop. And set that aside. Now let's look at this. Okay. So what I do now is I'm going to come in here now, normally if you had a pieced block, your block would be the exact size you wanted, right? But I'm going to come in here now and I'm going to normally we cut our, um, we cut at a quarter inch, right? A quarter inch in, that would be our, that would be our seam allowance is a quarter inch. However, for this particular block, I am going to do a 3 8 inch. And so I'm going to get myself a pencil here. 
and I'm going to come down here to my edge. Here we go. And I'm going to count in one, two, three, and I'm going to mark my three eighths of an inch right there so I know where it's at. And then I'm going to take my ruler all nice and lined up. And then I'll take my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut Hang on, I'm thinking about this for a second. Yes, because this is extra. So I'm going to cut this at 3 eighths of an inch right here, okay? And I would do that all the way around my block. And then that block, all of this extra is gone. You're not going to see any of that. So if anything, you know, was if you don't like seeing your knots on the back and you don't want to bury them, this is a great technique. And then I would sew, will sew all of my blocks together with that three eighths inch seam. Okay. So three eighths inch seam that gives me extra fabric on the back so that when I open my seams and lay them flat and iron them flat, they're going to give me a really nice flat finish. So when I quilt as I go, I do a three eighths inch seam rather than a quarter inch. And that's what I did here on this particular one. And then what I will do once I put all of these together, I will add my backing and I will baste my backing on with my basting pins. And then I will just take this to my sewing machine and using the same color thread on my sewing machine this time, I will just sew around the block. So what I'll do here is I will sew around my block and then with everything together, I will probably do a corner like this. Um, I, I will, when this gets done, I'll bring it back on and show you exactly how it's finished. But basically this block is done now. And then when I sew them together, I don't have to worry about adding extra bindings and things like that. If I wanna add my, or not binding, but borders and, and sashing. If I wanna add my borders and sashing, I can add that to my top from block to block. I can quilt here or not quilt here. It's entirely up to me in this process, but that's all I do. And then I add my backing so we could pretend, let's just pretend that this is going to be my backing. I would add that on there, sew around it, and then I'm done. Because I personally, I'm not someone that feels like I have to put my stitching on every single inch. And I know this isn't a lot, but it's plenty of quilting to hold this together. Even if I were doing this as a large um, quilt, it would be plenty to hold it together. I might do some um, stitching in my border area or something, but it's plenty to do. So this is technique one, just doing your block and your batting. So next week in week four is our Q&A. Let's go back uh, to our uh, regular camera. Next week is our Q&A uh, for week four. And what we, part of what I'll do next four, uh, next week is show you the design, uh, the, the project for this month. And that project, I am going to quilt as you go in this manner. And then I'm going to put the backing on this and show you exactly what I, what I did with it. Um, hopefully I can get all of these done. If, if this, whatever I've got allergies, cold, whatever it is, goes away, then I can get that done and show it to you. But that's how I'm going to quilt the project for next week is with this quilt as you go technique. So you can see how it will turn out on a larger piece that is more than one block, okay? All right, folks, I know this was a kind of a quick 
uh, video and all, but I wanted to share that with you because some of you have been asking. And like I said, I will share um, at another time some of the other techniques because there is more than one technique to do. Alrighty. So um, I know um, I've received pictures from a lot of you that um, I will be showing next Thursday. So if you want to send in pictures of your January, your February, your March blocks or projects, please do that. You can also um, post them to our Facebook page and I'll get them that way. Or you can post them wherever you post your photos with at so in common or hashtag so in common, and I can find them that way as well. Now, this is our March block of the month star. It's the pinwheel star version one. Remember, all block of the month, the digital file, the instructions, everything for the block of the month, as you see it here, is completely free at our website. So go take a look at there. We have some quilting patterns there as well. If you like, uh, this, um, I know it's hard to see on here because it's quilted with the same thread. This was a thread I used here as well. So it just goes with everything. I love it. Um, but this one, the flower and the grouping of flowers, it's called bouquet of flowers. It's available. Um, we have a great one for, um, our game night, uh, a project from January. So it's little game pieces uh, with stippling in it. It's super cute. You can take a look at those as well if you like. Alrighty, folks. So I'm going to let you go now. And I'm going to go back to bed, I think. Um, but um, have a great day. Thank you, as always, for joining us. Until next time, so life beautiful. Bye for now, everybody.